to fully loaded Boeing 747s were taxiing on the same runway. The KLM took its 180 degrees turn and got ready for takeoff while the Pan Am was still taxiing on the runway. Without getting clear instructions, the KLM started to hurdle down the runway. Twenty seven March nineteen seventy seven, Skip Hall Airport, Amsterdam. A Boeing 747 was on its chartered flight to Canary Island, Spain. The flight was chartered on behalf of the Holland International Travel Group. On board the flight were 234 passengers and 13 crew members. The captain of the flight was Jacob Louis Velduisen van Zanten, 50 years old, and had an experience of 11,700 total flight hours. His flight time on the Boeing 747 was 1,545 hours. He was the head of flight training department of KLM and a training captain. The first officer was Klaus Meurs, 32 years old. He had a total experience of 9,200 flight hours. He had logged only 95 hours on the Boeing 747. The flight engineer was William Scruder, 48 years old. He had an experience of 17,031 flight hours. He had been on the Boeing 747 for about one year and had accumulated 540 hours on the aircraft. The aircraft took off from Skip Hall en route to Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, Spain. Twenty six March nineteen seventy seven, Los Angeles International Airport, United States. A Boeing seven four seven operated by Pan Am was on its scheduled passengers flight to Gran Canaria, Spain, with an intermediate stopover in John F. Kennedy International Airport, New York City. The flight left Los Angeles and landed at JFK without any notable events. The aircraft was refueled and the new crew members boarded the flight with 14 more passengers from here. In the command of the flight was Captain Victor Grubbs, 56 years old. He had accumulated 21,043 of total flight hours and 564 hours on the Boeing 747. The first officer was Robert Bragg, 39 years old. He had 10,800 hours of total flying time and 2,796 hours on the Boeing 747. The flight engineer named George Wands was 46 years old. 
he had 15,210 hours of total flying time and 559 hours on the Boeing 747. Flight 1736 took off for Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. Both of the aircrafts were heading towards Gran Canaria. While they were en route, the bomb exploded in the airport passenger terminal. So the civil aviation authorities closed the airport temporarily and all incoming flights bound for Gran Canaria had been diverted to Los Rodeos Tenerife, including the two Boeing 747. The aircraft landed at Tenerife with the time difference of 35 minutes. Tenerife is a regional airport. It was really hard for the airport to handle all the traffic diverted from Gran Canaria. The airport have single runway and one long taxiway running parallel to it with four short taxiways connecting the two. While waiting for Gran Canaria Airport to reopen, the airplanes occupied so much space parking on the long taxiway. As a result, the taxiway was not available for taxiing. The departing aircraft needed to taxi along the runway to establish and position for takeoff. The crew of KLM allowed the passengers to get off and they were transported to the terminal building by bus. When Gran Canaria Airport opened to traffic, the Pan Am crew prepared for takeoff. But at that moment, the KLM 4805 was refueling ahead of them. It took about 35 minutes to refuel the aircraft. Later, the passengers boarded the KLM flight, but a Dutch family of four members were missing. The search delayed the flight even further. Also, a tour guide had decided not to reboot the flight to Gran Canaria because she lived on Tenerife and thought it was not practical to fly and return the next day. During the time that both aircrafts landed, the weather was clear, but this time the weather was foggy and the visibility dropped to almost zero. The KLM was instructed to taxi down the entire length of the runway and make a 180 degree turn to get into the takeoff position. The controller asked the KLM crew to report when they will be ready. Then the Pan Am was instructed to follow the KLM down on the same runway and exit the runway by taking the third exit on their left. The crew of Pan Am did not understand clearly as controller had told them to take the first or third exit. The Pan Am crew successfully identified the first two taxiways, but as the cockpit voice recordings, they did not indicate that they saw the third taxiway. The Pan Am crew were not certain of their position on the runway. It was massive Boeing 747. To exit the runway through taxiways 2 and 3 was practically impossible because they needed to turn 148 degrees from here and again another 148 degrees from here. 
On the other side, KLM crew informed ATC that they were ready to take off. The captain of KLM applied the takeoff thrust. The Pan Am crew also heard that information and informed the ATC that they are still taxiing down the runway. The flight engineer of KLM tried to stop the captain, telling him that. Pan Am was not cleared yet, but the captain ignored it. The captain of Pan Am saw the landing lights of KLM from the distance of 700 meters. The crew of KLM pulled the control wheel when they saw the Pan Am in front of them. But it was too late. The KLM collided with the Pan Am just as it was taking off. Both of the planes exploded and burst into flames. There were 583 people who died, which made it the worst aviation accident ever. There were no survivors on the KLM, which was carrying 248 people. Out of 396 people in Pan Am, 61 were able to survive. The investigation was done by Civil Aviation Accident and Incident Investigation Commission, Spain. According to the investigators, the cause of the accident was that KLM Captain Van Zanten tried to take off without ATC clearance. It was certain that he was rushing to leave as soon as possible in order to comply with the strict KLM's duty time regulations. Another reason was the interference of simultaneous radio transmission. When the KLM captain said that we are going, ATC replied to them, OK, stand by for takeoff, I will call you. Simultaneously, Pan Am co-pilot said that we are still taxiing down the runway. These messages were not heard by the KLM crew. The Spanish Accident Board made three recommendations which still play an important role in aviation up until now. The pilots are required to learn aviation English, which features around 300 words and instructions on when and how to use them. The co-pilot, flight engineer and crew are given power to challenge the captain's decision. The words take off should never be used in an ATC clearance to avoid confusion with takeoff clearance. This involves changing the name ATC clearance for further clarity of the description of the route. This is all for now. Click here to subscribe our channel so that you won't miss our new video. Give a thumbs up if you are watching until now. I will see you in the next video. This is Sunil saying thank you for watching. Stay safe and healthy.